Good communication is as stimulating as black coffee and just as hard to sleep after. It is. Good communication can really enhance a relationship, whether that be a friendship, a coworker, a boss, employee relationship, or a loved one. So what is interpersonal communication? Or what is communication in general? Let's start by looking at the transactional communication model. This is a description of how communication would look if we were to put blueprints to it. So the transactional communication model actually has multiple pieces, just like a blueprint for a house and such. The first two pieces are the communicators. In the transactional communication model, both people are communicating simultaneously. So at identical times, each communicator is both sending and receiving messages. It isn't a one-way path. You don't send a message, they receive it, and then they interpret it and return it. It doesn't work that way. We are constantly sending and receiving messages. Now, these messages that we're sending both need to be encoded and decoded. In a sense, we are responding with our encoding and our decoding of messages. So both communicators are simultaneously sending messages and decoding them and then also receiving those messages on the other side. The messages can be a number of things. So how can you possibly be simultaneously encoding and decoding information? Well, don't think of communication as just something verbal something that comes out of your mouth. It is actually both verbal and nonverbal. So at one point, you can be sending messages that are both verbal, words that you've chosen to speak, as well as messages that are nonverbal. Your body posture, your facial expressions, your tone of voice, all of those things are continually sending messages to the other person. It is in this way that we are constantly sending and receiving messages. Within that, we also have what's called feedback, and most people have heard of the term feedback. Feedback being what information we are sending based on the tone or the nonverbal, other nonverbals, or the facial expressions, or the plain words that are said. What are we sending back in response to that? So feedback is constantly going throughout the communication process. At some points, it is all about your tone of voice. At some points, it's what words you've said, your body posture, your eye contact, a number of things. Imagine if you were having a conversation with someone face-to-face and you're very engaged in what you're saying and you're enthusiastic and your nonverbals are displaying that enthusiasm, you're using lots of gestures, your facial expressions are fluctuating, your tone is enthusiastic and you're leaning forward. So all of that shows that you are excited about what you have to say. But imagine that the feedback that you get from the person sitting across from you doesn't mimic that. Instead, that person seems to be constantly checking their watch, maybe they are leaning back with their arms crossed, Material like that, nonverbals like that, give you feedback that allows you to hopefully adjust the way you're communicating or clarify what that meaning is, how you've decoded what you're seeing, and determine whether that's accurate or not. We also have what's called channels within the transactional communication model, and that is the way you send the message. Channels can be the fact that you send it face to face. Maybe it's through social media, through texting, through phone conversation. All of that is considered a channel. Each one is its own individual channel of communication. In addition, we have what is called the field of experience or the environment of each of the communicators. So if you notice, these large blue shapes encompass much of this whole model. The field of experience of the environment that you are a part of is incredibly important in the transactional communication model. And what this means is that your background, the things that you've experienced over time, your current environment, meaning the culture in which you live in, the situation that you are experiencing, 
the point in your life that you are adhering to, those things impact your communication process. So it will impact the feedback you give. It will impact the messages you send, the channels in which you send them. For example, if you are at a moment in your life where you are extremely busy, you are constantly on the go, you may not communicate face-to-face as often. So your channel is impacted by your environment, by your field of experience. So you no longer are communicating as much face-to-face or over the phone. Instead, maybe you send emails and text more often. And the same thing can apply to the culture that you're in. If you live in a culture, in an area in which the, the females within your culture do not speak outright as much, you will not be uh, asserting information in the same way that you would be in a culture in which there's equality of the genders. So these all impact how communication progresses. Another part of this is what's called noise. That's this interference here that goes through the whole process. It impacts how we communicate within this whole model. And so things can interrupt this communication process. And that's what our, what we're referring to when we mention noise. And it can come on a lot of different levels. We can be referring to physiological noise, which is anything physical. So you're sick, you're cold, you're hungry, you're tired, all of that is physiological noise. It could be external noise, things like construction outside or a loud fan or something that's just physically blocking you from hearing. Maybe you have your earbuds in or you have Bluetooth on. Those things are interrupting you understanding and comprehending messages that are coming outside of that. So you can have physiological noise, those physical noises, you can have external noises, like outside noises. And you can also have psychological noise, which would include stress, message overload, you've got too much going on in your head, maybe you are preoccupied with a situation, all of that impacts the psychological noise. They're all forms of psychological noise. So on the whole, this communication model, the transactional communication model, physically represents what it is like to communicate with another person on a regular basis. 